Hi everyone, I'm Azri. Um, I'm a representative from the Oxford University Malaysia Club. And um, we're joined today by a very special guest, um, Professor Jerry Bodeker, who is a current member of Green Templeton College at the University of Oxford. And he's also a retired faculty member um, of Medical Sciences from the University of Oxford. He currently serves as the chair of the Mental Wellness in Initiative of the Global Wellness Institute. And he'll be talking a little bit about the Youth Mental Wellbeing Project. Um, hi, Professor. How are you today? Um, it's a pleasure hi, to Ashri. have you. Thanks. It's great be to be here talking to you. Can you tell me a little bit about where you are and how you've been keeping busy? Yeah, um, I'm in Perth, Western Australia. Um, I've been doing a lot of work uh, in Asia for uh, many years, and I have a base in Malaysia, uh, your country. And um, I came to visit relatives in Australia just a few days before Malaysia did a shutdown and banned foreigners from entering, uh, doesn't matter what their visa status. And a few days after that, Australia banned Australians from leaving the country. So um, I'm seriously here. Oh, that's a pity. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, how have I been keeping busy? Uh, I'll see if I can show you. Um, I don't know if you can see that. Let me just see if I can show you. Can you see out the window there? Yeah. So that's the ocean out there. All oh, right. Um, so you, you stay pretty close to the ocean, I see. Professor. I'm just staying a couple of blocks from Cottesloe Beach in Perth, right. in Australia. And Australia isn't on full lockdown, so we're allowed to go out and exercise, and we're allowed to um, be with have groups of two people. Um, oh. And so. You know, I went with a friend mm. uh, to walk her dog yesterday and had a swim. Uh, right. So we're allowed yeah. to do that, but we're not allowed to meet anybody else at the beach. So oh. if you see people you know at the beach, you can wave from a distance, but you can't. Right. Social distancing. Right. Yeah. yeah, so it's not as severe as it is. Yeah, um, it's very different here. Actually. Yeah. Yes, I know that. You have the army and the police. <laughs> yeah. Stopping yeah, people. the most serious. You've got a much higher incidence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Azri, this is why um, the mental wellness initiative that I chair for the Global Wellness Institute decided we wanted to focus on how young people are coping with this crisis and this lockdown. And how it started was that um, one of my colleagues, uh, team members in the mental wellness initiative, um, her daughter, uh, there in Houston, Texas, but her daughter was a first year student at the University of Amsterdam and was stuck. Uh, and all the other students were going home and she was debating, should she stay there? They were then at the time saying three weeks. Um, and her mother called me and said, you know, would you step in and help just uh, talk this through with her? Um, so I did. And, um, she decided to get out of there, which was exactly the right thing to do. And she's now back home in Houston and uh, making videos and interviews like this for our mental wellness uh, youth wellbeing project. Okay. Um, but what I realized was that um, students particularly, uh, and, you know, majority of young people are students, um, are going through huge pressures. There's the whole academic side of things. Um, what about our exams? What about our university entrance for those who are sitting for qualifying exams? Um, you know, what about our graduation? Um, I'm a Harvard University graduate and Harvard's put out a message that they are not having their graduation, which they call commencement, uh, this year for the first time since the Second World War, I think. Um, so there are huge changes for students. How do I get home? I know you've had to go through that coming from Oxford back to Malaysia, how yeah. do I get home? Exactly. Um, are there yeah. flights available? Is my embassy going to help me? Is anyone going to help me? Uh, what about students who can't afford the fare? Um, so um, what about people who, who are sick or whose family members are sick? Um, there are a lot of pressures. And what I realized was that young people 
uh, don't have a really sort of solid um, place to go to air these issues and find solutions. And the way it's being done uh, is through thing, apps like House Party, where people are just yeah. getting on and checking in <laughs> from time to time and seeing who's there, which yeah, are yeah. there, their friend, friends are there. That's definitely and how I'm talking coping. to their friends. Yeah. That's how you're coping. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that's pretty interesting. You know, this is what is really peer to peer support. It's people helping one another in their mm. same age group, same sort of demographic. Um, what are they bringing to that? What resources are they have? What if somebody's really um, suffering and suffering extreme anxiety or panic attacks over where's the money going to come from? Am I going to get a flight? Um, you know, is my grandma going to pull through? That sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. So that's why we felt it's good to just uh, have some voices of young people talking about this and how they're dealing with it, how they're coping, um, and how they'd like to see things progress from here in terms of, uh, of support. Okay, right, yeah. Obviously, it's, it's, it's a very, um, it's a very relevant, um, um, the white paper project, it began before the COVID-19 outbreak, but obviously it's more relevant now, right? Um, yeah, so the white paper you're referring to is a project um, that our team in the Mental Wellness Initiative uh, worked on for a year and a half, and we launched 18 months ago. It's called a white paper on mental wellness, and its subtitle is Pathways to Evidence and Horizon. So Pathways to Mental Wellness, Evidence about the Pathways and Horizons. Where is this? How far does mental wellness go? What does it mean? What's the big picture? Um, and so what we did was we gathered scientific evidence, the latest and the best scientific evidence, for all the things that people know and um, experts recommend for wellness, but particularly for mental wellness, and decided to put science behind it. Is, is there evidence that um, social support makes a difference to people, people's mental well-being? Is there evidence that meditation and prayer can make a difference to people's mental well-being? How about exercise? You know, we know that it's it's important for physical health. What does it do for mental health? Uh, what kinds of exercise, aerobic, anaerobic, um, solo exercise, group exercise? What about nutrition? Um, we know that a healthy diet is important for uh, a healthy body, but what about healthy diet and healthy mind? Um, what do we know about optimal diet for optimal mental well-being? And so we searched for the, the uh, studies in all of these areas for over a year, pulled it all together into a focus to basically say, these are the main pathways we've identified that contribute to mental well-being and that are not based around therapy or a therapist, but that are self-managed, self-directed. Um, they're what I can do, what you can do. Um, and here's what, science says we can do this with confidence because there's now a body of evidence that says this approach improves brain functioning and so on. One of the things we found that was most interesting is that there's new evidence that a number of different pathways or, or approaches um, to pursuing mental wellness, mental well-being, um, actually lead to changes in the brain. And previously, when I was um, a student, the prevailing wisdom was that the brain stops growing at 19. Um, are you 19 yet, Azri? I'm 20. You're 20. Well, the old view would be that you're already one year on the slippery slope. Don't you? <laughs> um, however, um, the latest research shows that with the right kind of stimulus and activity, the brain can continue to produce new gray matter, cortical matter, and white matter, subcortical matter, um, throughout the adult lifespan. Um, wow. okay. Yeah, it can produce new neurons, uh, new pathways, uh, new patterns of communication across hemispheres, um, 
And that frees up the huge potential that we have in our brain. And that's one of the messages we want to bring up. And that's why understanding this, you know, reading the white paper, I know you're going to show uh, the cover of it, do a screenshot of that and give a link to that for people who are yeah. interested. But understanding all of this when you're young um, means you can start doing this so that uh, your brain is continuing to benefit and grow your uh, immune course, system yeah. with it, your physical strength and energy with it throughout yeah. the lifespan. And there's not a sense that uh, you get to a certain point where it's all declined. It's not true. There's, there's evidence that that's not necessary at all. Right. Okay. There's hope, right? Yeah, I, like there's my brain. Hope. Can... <laughs> yeah. I, there's uh... hope for, for your brain and for my brain at the other <laughs> end of the age spectrum. <laughs> So um, yeah, if anyone's unaware, um, the, yeah, the white paper is a, a report which was published by Professor Goddicker and his team of researchers at the Global Wellness Institute, and it's it's really insightful. It'll be linked in the description, and I'll I'll post a, like a little preview of what it looks like here right now, and um, I highly recommend everyone to check it out because um, yeah, it has a lot of interesting information and research, and it's yeah, it's really informative. With the pandemic, there's a lot of concern about mental health of the older generation because obviously the older generation is, um, you know, you, you could argue that the older generation um, is more prone to isolation, you know, um, they, they don't use social media as much. So a lot of the older generation isn't as tech, tech savvy, you could say that. So do you think um, um, it's, should we focus, like, should we keep our focus on, on younger members of society with this project? Or do you think? Um, it's important to include all the members of the society as well. Um, of course it is. Um, it's not either or at all. Mm -hmm. um, it's just that youth mental wellness and well-being uh, have not been brought into the conversation. Right. Uh, that's why we're bringing it in. Everyone is looking at the points that you've made. Right. Um, I do think that older people may not be as tech savvy as younger people, mm -hmm. but um, most grandparents are on Facebook with their kids. Um, people your age don't use Facebook, but grandparents use Facebook and grandchildren, <laughs> young grandchildren use yeah, Facebook. Yeah. And they're on FaceTime. Uh, you know, they're connected. They're talking right. uh, with yeah. people and seeing them. Um, but the stresses of young people, particularly when they're away in college, mm -hmm. you know, um, some of my friends had kids at school uh, at school in America, parents in Asia, how do I get my kid out of there? You know, Harvard's given them five days to get out. Yeah, yeah. Where Probably. do they go? Mm -hmm. Where do they go? Yeah. You know, they're saying, they're calling me, you know, we don't have any family or friends in mm -hmm. Boston. What do our kids do? How do I get them on a flight? Are they going to be safe? Should they wear a mask at the airport? Should they wear a mask yeah. on the flight? A um, whole lot of new issues. Uh, and yeah. stresses um, that are there. But definitely for older people, it's extremely important that their mental mm -hmm. health uh, is looked after and addressed. I think that um, older people, in a sense, uh, may be under less mental pressure than people who have young and uh, have young families because they're wondering, you know, what's going to happen as the salary drying yeah. up, is the yeah. income there, are the school bills going to be paid, um, what about the mortgage payment or the rent or whatever, those are real issues and for young people living at home with families under those kind of stresses, there are issues of tension as well. So we wanted to explore how young people are coping and see if, you know, there are solutions developing of, uh, how to deal with these kinds of pressures. Okay, so we all know about like the benefits of exercise and diet and what you mentioned just now, like adequate amounts of rest and how that all affects your mental health, right? But um, do you have any other like new information that like you want to communicate, especially to the younger generation? What could they yeah, do? Yeah, um, I don't know that we do know all about uh, the benefits of exercise and good nutrition and so on. We've heard exercise is good for you, healthy nutrition is important. But I don't think we really understand the science behind it at all, most people. And um, that's what we've tried to put in the white paper so that people understand when I move, this is what happens to my body. But 
this is what happens to my brain and my immune system. My immune system gets boosted by exercise. I become stronger and more resistant to infection if I exercise. My brain, when I exercise, um, benefits from enhanced immunity. It benefits from the endorphins produced by exercise and elevates mood. Uh, with higher levels of endorphin production, it changes brain chemistry and mood is elevated as well. Um, there's the opposite of, you know, exercise and vigorous activity, and that is deep rest. And meditation is a sort of a deepest point of that. Um, and we're seeing that with meditation, there are changes in the prefrontal electrical uh, activity of the brain. There's more coherent alpha activity, which is associated with problem solving, not frustration, you know, but solving problems um, with higher reasoning and thinking with creative solutions. Um, we see um, over time, a study at Harvard Medical School found that just with eight weeks of regular meditation, there was an increase in gray matter, cortical matter in the brain and white matter, subcortical matter in the brain where information processing occurs just from twice daily meditation, yeah. deep meditation. So um, we also know that reduces stress, um, calms the mind, reduces anxiety and depression. But the new knowledge, you know, what's new, you're asking, what's new is that yeah. those experiences that people have and the results that come out on tests of anxiety and depression and so on of improvement are actually matched by changes in brain. And with regular practice, those changes stay in place and lead to different coping strategies and different sense of mental balance and what we call mental wellness rather than just plain mental health. But there's a sense of thriving, of flourishing, of growing uh, as well. And the same with nutrition, Azri. Um, you know, there's a, a new field um, called nutritional psychiatry. Um, now, when I was training as a clinical psychologist, the thought that psychiatry would ever embrace, embrace nutrition was just uh, inconceivable. <laughs> right. Now there's a journal of nutritional psychiatry. There are articles and books on it. And basically what the psychiatrists are saying uh, is, first of all, don't come to me with your problem. Come to me with your diet. Let me know what are you eating and what are you not eating. And then go away and for a month or so, have the following kind of diet. Whole grain diet, carbohydrates, no refined carbohydrates. So no white bread, white rice, white sugar, no, no refined carbs. Um, largely plant-based. Protein, animal protein, lean and light. Um, legumes, fresh fruits, fresh vegetables. Should be right what you'll diet. find is if you do that for four to six weeks, that kind of diet, that brings about changes in your body that lead to changes in mental functioning, also immune functioning. Oh. Um, mood is lifted. So the, the nutritional psychiatrists say, try this nutritional program for a month or so first, then come back then let's see what's left of your problems because it's only then that we're separating the effect of poor nutrition <clears throat> and mental stress yeah so yeah. if we take yeah. care of poor nutrition we can take care of a lot of depression and anxiety and inability to cope and so on and it's been found that uh, people who have high intake of what we would call junk foods um, have uh, consistently higher depression scores and higher anxiety scores. Oh, wow. tests. Yes. Oh, wow. okay. And I don't think young people know that. But, you know, that's yeah. really important to know. Yeah, definitely yeah. not. Because, you know, you know, I'm, I'm 20. So obviously, like, at my age, all my friends don't really care, like, what they put in their body, right? <laughs> so, yeah, I guess if, if... If they did care, their mood would be better, their health yeah. would be better. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. yeah. As, as odd as they may seem to their friends. All right. Um, so, yeah, so um, this is obviously the, the Youth Mental Wellbeing Project is obviously a really great project. And um, we want to get the word out, you know, yeah, about get the word out. 
how to really flourish yeah. mentally during so, this time of challenge. Yeah. So, so how, how, how do you plan to, to get the message out to younger people? You're going to do it, Azri. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah. You're yeah. going to tell people about the white paper. <laughs> You're going to tell them what the findings are. We got other people doing interviews. Right. We'll drill into all those findings. We'll put them up. People will learn about them. And hopefully yeah. they'll read the white paper. It's not rocket science. Sorry, just the last question. Um, do you have any messages? Like how, how can other people get involved in this project? Can anyone contact you? Or? Uh, yeah, they can contact us. Um, I'll give you the uh, email address. We've got a YouTube channel that we'll be putting yeah. these videos on. Okay. Um, we have... A, um, I think it's actually global.mental.wellness at gmail.com. Yeah, I think so, yeah. I'll, I'll put all the links in the description so anyone who watches the video can. Yeah, so people can join, you know. There are no limits to creativity. You know, if people want to animate, if they want to do some musical thing, um, if they want to do interviews of other people, how they're coping, uh, if anyone wants to talk about a peer support network, how that's working, if you want to explain how apps are helping, um, all of that. But we're also keen that people drill in to the findings of the white paper because it's there for you, for your benefit, you know, during these times. All right. Um, thank you so much, Professor. Um, thank you for Most your welcome, time. welcome, Azri. Um, Great talking um, with you. I hope you stay safe in Perth. You stay well, too, in Kuala Lumpur. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay.